It's kind of weird kind of music, isn't it? To introduce our guest. Isn't it kind of weird? <laughs> but it's appropriate, isn't it? Yes, it is. Because it's Halloween tomorrow. But yeah. it's even appropriate right now because our guest is a paranormal expert and he's written a book called Haunted Plantations of the South. Mm -hmm. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Haunted Sounds Plantations like of the South, uh, the, dr the dramatic history of the true stories from the days before and during the Civil War in majestic homes from seven southern states. Richard Southall is on the phone. Good morning, Richard. Why, good morning. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Where are you? I'm calling from northern West Virginia. Wow. Is it nice? I bet that's a nice time of year to be up there, right? Beautiful with the leaves changing and yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah. Love See, the, the grass is always greener, isn't it? See, I'm, I'm in Florida. Everybody says I want to be in Florida, but when I hear somebody in Western North Carolina, I mean, Western, <laughs> Northern West Virginia, whatever you said, it sounds like a pretty yeah. place. It so, is. So let me um, ask you this Do you have paranormal abilities? No, no, I wouldn't say that. I just have an interest in it. Just no. an interest? Yeah. Yeah, me yeah. too. I, I I've had maybe two or three that I can't explain, like like a, a dream, or or premonition. But you can, I can't make it happen. Like some psychic people say they can make it happen or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. I tend to be cautiously optimistic about things. I mean, I try not to jump to conclusions whenever I do an investigation. I'm, and my thought of it is in regards to the paranormal investigations and ghost hunting, um, a byproduct of doing the research is you become somewhat of an expert on the local history of the local legends of, of an area. That oh, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, that one, that, and that is cool, whether you believe in ghosts or not. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's... And that's fun, like that. Uh, you focused on, on plantations in this one, but you focused on Route 66 in another book. Is that right? I did. Back in 2013, um, I wrote a book on haunted Route 66, went out the entire, um, all through all of the states. Oh, that must have been fun. Oh, it was. It was a whirlwind tour. Um, did it in 10 days, but the book has over 125 stories from all of the from each of the states. Oh, my goodness. I want, to, I want to ask you about that one, too. <laughs> How many stories in the Plantation book, since that's the book we're uh, focusing on? Okay, there's close to 70. Not as many as with Route 66. Wow, but that's still a lot. It, it took a lot of research. Um, what I tried to do was sort out urban legends from actual reported hauntings and reported ghost stories. Um, the book's not so much just a collection of ghost stories, because what I do with each story I kind of have a foundation with the history of each location so that we can understand maybe why a place became allegedly haunted. Okay, so let's say, okay, we have a, a, a house here in Ocala mm -hmm. called Seven wow. Sisters Inn. I don't know if it was a plant. It looks like it might have been a plant, but it's kind of close to all the other houses, so probably mm -hmm. not. But anyway, it's supposedly haunted. And, and I don't know the history behind it, but what you're saying is if, if somebody says something is haunted, you can actually trace the ghost to an actual living person who once lived in that place and, and therefore learn a little bit about the history. Right, and how I look at it, I mean, this may sound a little bit cliche, but ghosts were people too. There's nothing to be afraid of. I mean, it's just, I think it's like a recording. If something traumatic happened or something repetitious happened, it leaves an impression. The impression plays over on occasion. Pe um, mm -hmm. People think of hauntings as bad, but you dismiss that idea. Uh, well, there were good people and there were bad people, so mm -hmm. take that as you will. I, I don't think that hauntings are necessarily bad I, as much as I think they're misunderstood. Um, I, I think there's ghosts and I think there's spirits. Ghosts would be the recordings. Um, a spirit might be somebody that may not realize they've passed them, that, that they've actually died or they've got unfinished business. To me, that would be that would be pretty much the extent of it. Now, the, the, the word plantation right away brings to mind slavery, uh, right? Mm -hmm. So are, right. A lot, are, are a lot of these spirits or ghosts, are they former slaves? Hopefully they're not some slaves anymore. Mm -hmm. No, some of them are. Uh, some of the, There's usually four types of people, or, or of hauntings, um, that would be associated with the plantations. One, unfortunately, would be the slaves. Um, there's a lot of emotional connection to the plantation. Um, another one would be the plantation owners. 
another one would be the plantation families, and finally we've got the soldiers, the Civil War, you know, Union. Oh, and right, right, right. All of that, all of that coming together at one time, you know, that would mean that so many of these places could be more haunted than other locations. Um, tell, tell us one of the stories that, that strikes you as, a, as one, maybe one of your favorites. Is Florida included in the seven states? No. No. Uh, I think okay. I, that might have to be for part two. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh. So, yeah, we'll so is Georgia? Georgia? Let's see. Mm-hmm. What, what, are the yeah. so, what are the states? Okay. What we've got, we have Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. Um, okay. Okay. Although there were 18 states that did have plantations based on the Nagis- National Register of Historic Places. Um, there was over a thousand plantations that existed at one time. But a favorite story, um, I'll give you a fun one. It's okay. one of my favorites. Um, it's a place called Bonaventure Plantation. It's, if you know much about Thunderbolt, Georgia, the Bonaventure Cemetery, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, you know, that kind of, that I don't kind know of anything thing. about that. No. Oh, you don't. It's it's a famous book. It's a famous movie. There's a cemetery down in Georgia that used to belong. Um, it was actually a plantation before it was a cemetery. But long and short was there was a man by the name of Josiah Tattnall. He was a socialite. He he hosted parties from for all of the elite um, residents in the area. And one Christmas, it was during a Christmas party in, I believe, 1803, he, has, he had his guests, they were merrymaking, having a good time, and one of his house slaves took him aside, told him, the plantation house is on fire. We need oh. to get everybody out. Oh, well, he kept his cool. He kept his cool, and what he did, he ordered the, the servants to take the dining room tables out, to take the dinnerware out, to take the food out onto the front lawn, and he continued the party. Oh, so, my. Oh, yeah. It, it's, and he just pretty much just kind of blew it off that the, oh, the house is burning. That's fine. Let's just enjoy the celebration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so he's got like 20 or 30 guests at the, you know, in the yard. The pla- plantation house is burning in the background. When it's about to crash, he lifts up his goblet, toasts the entire party, and smashes mm-hmm. The goblet against them, um, pretty much against a tree. Now his friends do likewise, and they continue having their party. So, if you go to this particular area of the cemetery where the plantation house once stood, there have been reports of hearing people having a good time. There have been reports of shattering glass, and there have been reports of people being able to smell burning wood. Really? But do, but did yeah. they wow. die? I, I wasn't clear if the people died at the party. No, nobody died at the party. It was just... Because they were outside. Huh? So it's they just were outside. Yeah, they just got everything together. Wow. They got outside and continued to party. No one died at the at the burning. So now that sounds like what you described earlier as like a recording that just keeps right. playing and playing and playing. Uh-huh. It, and that's, that's pretty much it. Occasionally... Occasionally, you'll have you'll have that, and eventually it gets weaker. Um, if somebody does paranormal investigations or ghost hunts, if you will, they some people think that every time they go to a place that's allegedly haunted, they're going to get they're going to pick up um, a photograph of an apparition right, or record right, right. A, a voice. It, it's not like that. Sometimes hmm. you could visit a place two, three, four times without actually getting anything, but the next time. That's when you kind of hit the mother load. That's when you get the, the voices or the sounds or the photographs. You, you know, see, I, I told you that I have had a few, like a handful of little fleeting moments where I said, oh, gosh, all those people who say they're psychic, maybe there's something to it because I just had this crazy dream and here it is just came true. I had one not too long ago. I had a dream that I had a new car and, 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 and the back of my hood was up. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and, uh, I, I, and... Shortly after I had the dream, I hit a cow. I know it's crazy. And, and the cow caused my, the back of my hood to go up, and I had to get a new car. Mm-hmm. So I said, wow, I had a, like a psychic premonition. And, and so yeah, I know it's crazy. But, but, but I thought, you know, okay, so I can't do it on command, but other people maybe can. And, mm-hmm. and so that helps me to suspend disbelief. Do, right. So that's, I, I just said all that to ask you this. Did you, do you have to suspend disbelief in order to really do these investigations? 
I try to be skeptical. I try to be skeptically optimistic. I, I want to try to disprove a haunting before I can prove it. Um, m- most of the places I've investigated, in fact, were not haunted. It was based on um, misunderstanding. It could be based on something that was happening to the house, so on and so forth. I try to disprove it before, you know, the whole Occam's razor type thing. It's just that occasionally some of the hauntings are legitimate. That is, that's whenever it's That is it's cool amazing. stuff. And, and, and w- when you know it's, okay, to, to differentiate between the, 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 the haunting that's like a recording and the haunting that's like a living spirit, mm-hmm. if you will, does that one scare you at all, the living spirit one? Not really. And again, I've always been curious about the about the human psyche. I mean, maybe I shouldn't use the word parapsychologist, maybe a parasociologist might be a better term, but I, I'm, I look at it as they were people, and sometimes when people pass on, they need a little nudge. So Yeah, wow. Uh, uh, Richard Southall is our guest, and we need to take a little break, but we'll be right back. His book is called Haunted Plantations of the South. He does have at least one other book, which is about um, the haunted Route 66. Yeah, that And we'll find out if there are any other books as well. This is a fascinating topic and a good time of the year to talk about it with tomorrow being Halloween. So we'll take a little break and be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Today will be a delightful day with plenty of sunshine. The afternoon high, 81 to 85. Then a clear night tonight with lows in the low to mid-60s, upper 60s along the coast. For tomorrow, partly sunny skies and warm, the high 82 to 86. For Sunday, sunshine, some clouds, and very warm high 84 to 88. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Ah, ouch. Does pain have you glued to the couch? Yes, unfortunately it's true that every year we must get older, but that doesn't mean we have to deal with pain in our back, knees, or shoulder. If your muscles and joints are sore, don't worry anymore. Come get acupuncture from me and you'll be pain-free. Acupuncture starts as low as $35 at a Better You Healthcare. Call me, Dr. Erica Olstein, at 615-5566. Stop your pain from driving you insane. Have you heard of HyperDirectory? When looking for local businesses, go to Hyper.Directory. No need for triple W, no need for dot com, just Hyper.Directory. Connecting customers to local companies when it matters most. HyperDirectory is your local business directory partnered with the Ocala Chamber and Economic Partnership to bring you trusted local businesses. Keeping Ocala local. Use Hyper.Directory, no triple W, not even dot com, just Hyper.Directory. Connecting customers to businesses when it matters most. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that too. I need a new roof line and a new spoiler. And a new yep, and we can even do that too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. All right, 10 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this 30th day of October, which means tomorrow is Halloween day. Mm-hmm. It's a ni- nice, uh, going to be nice weather for Halloween, right, for the kids? Nice. Uh, on the phone, a guy who has written a book that you might want to pick up or, or maybe get the uh, the Kindle or the, uh, what do you call it, the ebook version. Richard Southall is on the phone. His book is called Haunted Plantations of the South. Richard, do you have a, an ebook version of, of the book? 
believe I believe there is. Uh, you'd have to check at Amazon.com. Uh, if there isn't yet, and I believe there is, there will be one soon. Okay. So. Yeah. I think I, I think I might get this. I like it. I know what I like about it. It sounds like you took the the effort to make it authentic. You just didn't take people's stories and write them down. I mean, you really did the research to make sure there was some substance to them. See, I originally had over two hundred stories. And I ended up whittling them down to, a, like I said, about 70 or so. Um, I, I threw out any urban legends or things that weren't credible. I, whenever I did research for each of the stories, I went to two or three separate sources so I could have as much of an authentic history and as concise um, account of each haunting. Um, it's as much of a history book as it is a haunting. And I li- that's the yeah, and I like that part of this story. I li- I like the fact that there's beca- because there's a lot of history. I, I, how did you narrow it down? Okay, if let's say for example you're at a plantation site, um, the book is focusing on the Civil War era. Right. I mean, there might have been somebody who died in the 60s, 1960s, I mean. <laughs> yeah. How did you differentiate between those ghosts? Well, actually, there were some stories in there about people that died in the early 1900s. So it, um, just because it's a plantation doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh. the Civil War era. I mean, the earliest plantation um, was in Virginia in 1650s. So it, it, we're talking almost a 300-year span of time. And, uh, you know, uh, hauntings will come up when you least expect it. I know Ronnie and four other guys, they would travel around. They were construction workers, and they rented a house uh, just outside of Atlanta. And uh, this was uh, about 12 years ago, I guess. And uh, they were told it was haunted, but rented the house anyway. And uh, huge doors on there. And when they would go out to smoke, sometimes they would leave the doors open. All of a sudden, the doors would just slam shut. And uh, there was one incident where one of the guys in in one of the guy's bedrooms, he was uh, sleeping. And then all of a sudden he felt like somebody was crawling on the bed. And then he looked around and there was nobody there. But there was that feeling and like he it it scared him so bad. He he wouldn't sleep up in that room anymore. He would sleep. He slept downstairs. He moved all his stuff down there. So there were, you know, times that that happened. And sometimes they would hear noises. And one night they were so tired. Ronnie had said, now, look we're sleeping don't bother us tonight just you know behave and there weren't any noises that night so huh. oh, that wow. was, that's a pretty cool story it is and, and and the more people you talk to the more stories like that you'll be hearing it's paranormal's gone mainstream i think i think that back in the day um we probably wouldn't have shared stories like that or but now it's 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 in vogue it's cool to do so and i i'd almost guarantee more people would have accounts like that than not. Um, uh, the the uh, I went to the to Amazon. By the way, there is a, a Kindle version of the book. So just for the okay. listeners, that that is available. It's it's kind of what what I've been doing lately is a lot of Kindle books. Um, do you? Um, it, it says here New Orleans has been called the most haunted city in America. Did you get a lot? Of, are there a lot of uh, plantations from New Orleans? Oh, it's just basically the whole. It's like the melting pot of the paranormal. You've got the plantations, you've got the voodoo, you've just got the whole history of it, and it wasn't so much even just plantations as it was just the whole ambiance. I I went there one time, and it just, you could just feel, you could just feel there was something different about it. I loved it, and I plan on going back one day, but it's it's not so much even the plantations as it is just the, the whole area. Did you did you bring anybody with you who was um, what do you call it a psychic or, or 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 at least had equipment like you know how some people have these devices that you can tell there's ghost or I don't know if they work or not but mm-hmm. um, it works if you want them to work let's put it that way um, I'm I know people that rely too much on the equipment uh, I think in, in my opinion the one of the most useful pieces of equipment would be a pen and paper. You get to know the person. You get mm-hmm. to know the history of it. Um, about 80% of a, of a paranormal investigation does not take place on site. Um, paranor- paranormal investigations, there's a lot of background research. With the ghost hunting, a lot of the people are going there just for the thrill and for the excitement of it. There's, the whole emphasis would be different between the two. 
Now, when you when you do this research, I imagine that the spirits are realizing you're you're there to do the research. I think they probably appreciate something like that because you're not uh, because you're delving into the history, and history is something we should never forget about. Right. I mean, I think if we forget the history, we forget the people, and I think. That's, to me, one of the reasons to keep history alive, no pun intended, <laughs> so, that, so that we can absolutely learn about who the people were that made the history. Let me, yeah. let me squeeze a phone call in. Good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on there with Richard Southall. Yes, good morning, good morning. Um, the, um, the Winchester Mansion out in um, California is reputed to be uh, a haunted uh uh, she was she was kind of a strange lady in her later life. Yeah. Uh, oh, really? All of the uh, money just, uh, you know, <laughs> wanted to pass that along. All right, thank you. Uh, have a good morning, all. Thank you. Um, that would be nice to go to. I would love to go there one day. Jeff, are, are any of them, uh, what do you want to say, like brothels? He he, he used the word reputed, and I just... Yes. It, <laughs> it, it, it brought to mind ill repute. So. Any of the plantations had brothel-type activity? <laughs> Well, no? not officially. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, most, most of the plantations are either going to be state parks, bed and breakfasts, private residences, or museums. But, um, there was one plantation that had been turned into a bit of a speakeasy. That was, of all places, down in down in Louisiana. It's called Lebeau Plantation. It was um, it was the place to be during Prohibition. Let's just put it that way. Can I? Can when Absolutely. when we think of plantations, we often think of the primary house, but a plantation often also had shacks on it, which was the living quarters of the slaves. Right. Did, um, were any of them still standing, and could you get any? Were there any stories from the from the little shacks? In some cases, there were. Um, I'll give you an idea. There is a place um, in Ed, called Edgewood Plantation in in Virginia, and what had happened was. There was a lady that had stayed, that the actual cabin had been converted into a, a bed and breakfast. Well, the plantation had been converted into a bed and breakfast, and one of the cabins had been converted into a little bungalow or a room. And a woman who was extremely sensitive, she went, she spent the night, conversed with some of the ghosts and spirits that were allegedly haunting this, and left. And she gave the manager a name by the name of Aaron Young. Nobody had heard the name before, but after doing research, found out that he was part of a regiment that had actually traveled through that area, and it's possible that he may have stayed at that cabin hiding out one evening. Wow. So wow. It's, yeah, it's kind of neat doing that, kind of just um, somebody telling us a story, and then we, doing, we do research, and we confirm that it's accurate. That's that's when it's really that's when it's fun I, I love the de i love the mm -hmm. um the grounded part of this i mean the yes. fact the fact that you're so grounded and, and this is a i mean this is more about history well it's as much about history as it is about the hauntings which is very cool um so i went to i went to amazon i know we can buy it there and, and i see haunted route 66 also on amazon do you have any re uh, any other websites you can direct us to to get the book well, also I did a third book. It's called How to Be a Ghost Hunter. It, it came out in 2003. The, I mentioned some of the technology, which is some of it's outdated, but the techniques are still sound. Okay. And, and I see it on there, yeah. And that, that's also a Kindle book, by the way. There you go. I didn't, I didn't mean that music to be so oh, loud. nice. Uh, it was the ghost. <laughs> that was, that was the ghost. The spirit. Turning up the music, yeah. Uh, that's it. But, no, you can go to, of course, Amazon. You can go to... Llewellyn.com. That's the publisher. L L E W E L L Y N. dot com. Um, you can also, if anybody's interested in contacting me, my email address is hauntedplantations at gmail. dot com. Okay, that's, that's easy enough. Question. We've got to run, Richard. Thank you so much for being on the air with us. Good luck with everything, and have a great Halloween. Right. Good, good, great thank interview. You this very is much, and thank you for having W O C A Ocal. <laughs> Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. President Obama says he's eager to sign the two-year budget deal passed overnight by the Senate. The spending bill averts a partial government shutdown in December. Senator and Republican presidential candidate Rand Paul opposed the deal, which also raises the debt ceiling. That means we're going to let President Obama borrow an unlimited amount of money in his last term in office, and I think it's
think it's a, a serious mistake. The legislation boosts spending on the Pentagon and domestic agencies. Fox Radio's Rachel Sutherland. The White House has praised the agreement, saying it provides substantial relief from harmful spending cuts while protecting people who rely on Social Security and Medicare. A Polish court has rejected a U.S. request to extradite filmmaker Roman Pol- 